Good morning, remote students. It's actually Thursday, um, February 18th, and I am videoing the class that I did yesterday. So I'm waking up to freezing rain like you guys are, and um, I'm hoping that we all keep our power. But yesterday, everything I did was on the overhead, and that never works well for filming, and so um, I'm going to film this for you right now. So I am attaching with this two handouts, and one is your mini thesis outline. This one that I've got the camera on right now is a template, and you have this as a doc on Google Classrooms, and you're going to um, make your own copy of this, and this is gonna be your working document that you're gonna begin outlining your topic. So um, let me just go over a couple things for your outline. One is, um, even though I don't have name in MLA format in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to do that. The second thing is that, if you look, it's single-spaced. And for this assignment, that is fine. Um, do not be surprised if your outline ends up being four or five pages. This is going to be a pretty um, detailed outline that's going to help you write your paper um, much, much more easily than if you didn't have this outline. So you can single space it. Um, you have the Roman numeral shell here, but you may have to do sub points and you just need to make sure on an outline that all your types of points align, like my Roman numeral one, two, three, four align, my ABCs align, my one, two, one, two. Now, this is a template, it's not, um, it's, it's not going to match exactly what you have. Like all of you will have these overall categories, introduction, history, confirmation point one, um, confirmation point two. But what comes underneath it, you may have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Um, you may have um, three a, uh, mini claims. You may have more data and you're gonna see that when I give you a sample, okay? So um, you, can, you can fill it in differently. But the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna write your research question as it was given to you. And your research question is general, of course. It, you might be affirmative or negative. You don't have to indicate that, but you're gonna write your research question. And then you're going to write your thesis um, as it has been approved. So that thesis and supporting arguments worksheet I think all of you have that back. I will double check. But that's what you're going to write. And we've talked about as you begin researching, you might tweak your thesis. Like you might decide instead of saying that social media is harmful to the whole population, maybe you just want to focus on, on teenagers. Maybe you just want to focus on children. That's fine. You want to just give me a heads up if you're tweaking it in any way and get my approval. Um, okay, now in class I talked about that there are a few of us in the world that when we start writing a paper, we like to start with the introduction. It just feels sequential and it gives us the information we need to jump in with the introduction. Um, but I wanna acknowledge that most people aren't like that. So for most of you, even though the introduction comes first on your outline, you're just gonna skip over it. <laughs> you're not gonna outline it right now. In fact, you may not outline it until you get all the way through your paper, and that's okay. Right now, that Roman numeral one introduction is a placeholder. So when I talk about the first half of your outline being submitted, I, I want introduction there. I'm really not expecting much detail, unless you're one of those people like me who really loves starting from the very beginning. But I do want to point out something. Your introduction starts with an attention-grabbing opener. No surprise after the pro um, writing projects you've done. And so as you're researching, I just want you to keep this in the back of your mind that you may need, you're going to need something that opens your paper. And so as you come across information that you think might be suitable, go ahead and highlight it and write intro in the margin. And I'll give you an example. Um, my my topic that I did was on the border wall, that we need to have a wall with Mexico. And when I was researching, I came across an article that was really quite heartbreaking. It was about a college girl in Iowa um, who was killed while she was out running one morning. And um, 
the person who killed her was an illegal immigrant. And so um, it was a really, really sad story. And there was a big part of me that didn't like to use it, but it really grabbed attention and underscored people's fears about illegal immigrants that um, they cause crime to go up. So, so just keep that in mind. Even if you're not writing your introduction, what are things that you're reading that could be attention grabbing? Um, okay, background information, just a little bit to introduce us to the topic. And then of course, the last sentence in your intro will be a thesis and you should have that approved by now. Your thesis, you may add some words, you may elaborate, you may change the order of your points, but go ahead and put your thesis there. Okay, um, then we're gonna come down to history. Now history, put a star by history. This is where I would start um, because history is also going to help you grapple with your topic. So all of you have a topic that has background. And so um, you want to talk about when did this thing start? So um, I, had a, I wish I had a list of your topics. Right now I can only remember Sadie's, which is gun rights. And so maybe what you might want to do is talk about... Um, you know, gun rights, like what makes gun rights important in the United States and when did it become controversial? You might want to mention the Second Amendment that gives people the right to bear arms. Just kind of what's the history on gun rights. Um, the things that are listed under history are ideas. You don't have to do all of these. So maybe you'll talk about the start of the problem, like background to gun rights, and then maybe you'll skip B and on C, Hmm, I'm going to define a semi-automatic weapon, maybe. Um, con concerns, current controversy, like what's the debate? And um, you should have something that describes the current controversy that says, um, if I was doing gun control, some people believe that guns um, are a unique American right that should be protected. Others believe that guns have jeopardized the safety of our public and that they should be restricted. So make sure you define, like there's a controversy, which means there's two sides. And then the last thing in history is you're gonna have a transition sentence. This is just gonna remind us of your thesis. And it's not a full-blown thesis, but it's gonna be a partial paraphrase. So um, let me give you an example from mine. So if my current controversy sentence was something like, um, many people believe that the border wall must be built to protect the United States from illegal immigrants. Others believe that illegal immigrants have suffered in their home countries and should be protected by the United States. There's my controversy. Um, my transition sentence might be something like, However, there are many reasons why the United States should build a border wall. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick paraphrase. So that's your history, and I just want to reiterate, those are sample items you can include. You don't need all of them. And your history should be, um, when you start writing, it's going to be like a half page to maybe three quarters of a page. Um, I love history. I could go really in depth. Um, if you have problems knowing what should you include in history, then, then talk to me. Okay, but this is really what I want to talk about. Confirmation points. So all of you have three supporting arguments. And um, if, you, if you watch that Toolman video, and if you haven't, it, it is a must, because the Toolman um, method of argumentation says that you make a claim, which is your truth statement. It's really an opinion and you support it with data, and the data can be evidence um, such as historical facts, or statistics, or expert authority, or a legal document, or a court case. Data is a really, really big bowl. So you're looking for different types of data or evidence, and we already have a handout on that um, when we talked about historical evidence, statistical evidence, analogical evidence. So you have lots and lots of options. And then um, after you present a claim and data to support it, you write a warrant which connects your data. You explain 
how the data supports your claim. So essentially your, your leading thesis is going to be a whole series of claim data warrants. And at first it's gonna feel really awkward and when I talk about it right now, it may seem very overwhelming but the more you use this, the more your brain is gonna be trained and it really is a great tool for anything. No matter where you go from high school, you're gonna to have to write essays. Um, you might take AP classes. This form of claim data, uh, claim data warrant is very helpful. Okay, so your confirmation point. You have levels of claim. Essentially, your thesis statement is a claim with three supporting arguments. But then when we get down to your paragraphs, each supporting argument is a confirmation point, and it's a claim. So here's the first argument that supports the thesis. So how are you going to prove this claim? Well, you're gonna prove it with many claims. So arguments that support this claim. And every mini claim you have, you're gonna give a piece of data. You might have two pieces of data, that's fine. And you're gonna have a warrant, so you're gonna give an explanation. And the warrant is your critical thinking. That's your original thought. You're not gonna find this in any of your sources. You're gonna to have to explain how the data proves your claim. Okay, you need at least two mini claims under every confirmation point. You might have three, but let me tell you, your paper length of five to eight pages is gonna fill really fast, so don't have more than three mini claims. Now, each mini claim has a warrant, but when you get to the end of the paragraph, there's going to be a large warrant that ties both mini claims back to the confirmation point. Ah. And then you're going to do a clincher sentence, and your clincher sentence should explain impact. Why does your argument matter? Why does it matter to your general thesis? Okay, so that's confirmation one. It's the exact same thing for confirmation two um, and confirmation three, okay? So that brings us up to Roman numeral five of the outline. So you're gonna have three confirmation points and then um, Roman numerals six and seven is your refutation point. That's when you have one strong argument against your thesis. And there is a, a formula here that we're going to use for how to state that and how to respond to it. And we'll talk more about that next week. I would not encourage you to work on your refutation this weekend. What I'd love for you to be doing this weekend is outlining history and confirmation points. And then the last thing is the conclusion. And I'll just tell you right now, you're not going to outline your conclusion. So when you look and see that your outline is due next Friday, um, I am not expecting the conclusion to be outlined. That's just really a placeholder. It gives you an overview. We're gonna talk about conclusions in a couple of weeks, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna give you a sample. And again, you have, let's see. Let's see if I can do this on my computer. Okay, I'm not gonna do it on my computer. It's color-coded. Uh, let's see if I can. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, so here's my outline. You can see my research question. Should the US fund a physical wall for its entire border with Mexico? You can see my thesis statement. Now notice that I tweaked this, that I said the US should fund a physical wall for vulnerable sections of its border with Mexico. So not the entire border, but just vulnerable sections. I decided that that was more provable. Um, vulnerable sections of its border with Mexico because governments are responsible for maintaining border security. History proves the effectiveness of walls and illegal immigration is costly to American taxpayers. So my thesis is in parallel form Okay. Now, on my outline, I did, you know, I just left that there for right now. Um, I kind of put some ideas, but what I really want to show you today is how I did my confirmation points. And it's color, whoa, good golly. I know there's an easier way to film, but I haven't 
figured it out. I'm just holding my iPad. Okay, so here's confirmation point one. So um, there's my claim that the U.S. should build a physical wall on the Mexican border because governments are responsible for protecting a country's boundary. This was my first point in my thesis, so it's going to be my first supporting argument, or now we're going to call it confirmation argument. So um, my first mini claim is that the U.S. Constitution requires government protection. And my evidence, in number one, is going to be the Constitution. So the United States shall guarantee in every state in this union a Republican form of government, government and shall protect each of them against invasion. That's part of the job of the government. So there's my evidence in blue. And then my warrant is in yellow. So here's how I'm going to tie the evidence to my mini claim. Border protection is key to protecting the U.S. from foreign invasion. Since border protection is guaranteed in the Constitution, and since is one of those words that um, is a transition word to a warrant, since border protection is guaranteed in the Constitution, the federal government must take necessary steps to secure its borders. Okay? So, um, I'm just taking language from the Constitution and saying that's what the Constitution says the government has to do. Okay, um, then B is my second mini claim. Borders are pointless if they aren't enforced. And I have two pieces of evidence. So one, and these are just things that I know. Before and during World War II, Hitler easily invaded European countries who didn't have protective borders. Okay? And then two, the southern border of the United States was the result of the U.S. winning the Mexican-American War in 1850. Oh, don't do that. Oh, good golly. Okay, hold on. Let's get this back up here. Okay. Military force was key to establishing the present force. So then in yellow is my warrant. If borders have been violated and created by military force throughout history, it's obvious borders change unless they're enforced. Countries like the U.S. or leaders like Hitler seem likely to expand their power by stretching these borders. Unprotected borders are vulnerable to being violated if they're not secure and defended. Okay, so you may be going, wow, Mrs. Childers, that is a lot of words. Does mine have to be that long? So, um, yeah, I love words. I don't expect that your warrant will be super long. Your warrant could be as short as one sentence. Okay, and if I were to go back and edit this, I could probably say this in fewer words. So your warrant needs to be at least one sentence, but it needs to tie data to claim. The second thing you're probably thinking is, this isn't a keyword outline. <laughs> you're writing in sentences. And in fact, it is not. And we are gonna drop the language, keyword outline. Um, keyword outline is a really valuable tool for helping you learn not to plagiarize, how to just draw words and phrases and then reassemble that when you get ready to write. But for something as big as a mini thesis, it's really not practical. So here's what I want you to do. I, I don't mind if you use words and phrases. Certainly your outline does not need